Hello, you're welcome to BTA. My guest is Shika Akolache. She is the country director for the Enterprise Development Center based in Tapali. You're welcome to BTA, madam. Thank you very much. Now, tell us about the Made in Ghana Summit coming up in December. How relevant is it? Well, um, I think the Made in Ghana Summit is um, very relevant, especially um, considering the times that we are in in Ghana these days. Um, made in Ghana is synonymous with local content and the whole idea of the Enterprise Development Center is to support local content policies and law that Ghana has. So I think it's coming at the right time. It is going to be an opportunity for us to even explore and deepen our commitment and our actions towards um, local content participation in Ghana. Very good. Now you are scheduled to speak on some topics and one of them being developing local content strategies in the oil and gas industry, the case of the Enterprise Development Center. Why important? Uh, why is it important to develop strategies for our local content? Um, of course, um, everything that has to be done successfully has to be done uh, in a strategic manner. I mean, you have an idea and you want to achieve a result, you need a strategy in place. So it is very important that we develop strategies, local content strategies, to complement or to support the local content ally and, and to ensure that as Ghanaians um, and, of course, for the international oil and gas companies that are participating um, in, in our economy, um, there is local content strategy that would create a win-win situation for both um, indigenous Ghanaian enterprises and international oil and gas companies who are investing in our sector. Now, I know that the EDC is doing a lot, I mean, to, to actually um, sustain our local development policy or to get locals participate in the industry. Now, how compliant are the IOCs to our local uh, content policy or law? Well, um, I think this is a shared responsibility the local content law um, uh, implementation is a shared responsibility. Government of Ghana has done its part by ensuring that um, they have a law in place. Um, the international oil and gas companies have a responsibility to ensure that they are following and um, making sure that they are, they are living um, um, the talk or, if I may put it, they are incorporating local content in their, um, in their strategies and, and, and abiding by it. Um, when it comes to the Ghanaian, um, Ghanaian side, I think the local enterprises also have a responsibility to avail themselves to learn and to be able to, to acquire the necessary skills that is required and knowledge so that the gap that exists, um, seeing as this is um, a fairly new sector, the gap that exists can be easily bridged. Now, I asked this question because earlier on, before the law was promulgated, some of the IOCs raised um, some, some considerations about certain aspects of, of the law. Um, and one of the areas is that the equity um, share. Another area is also um, standards that we, we have or we possess to participate um, in the industry together with them. How relevant is it still? Well, um, because I don't work for the oil and gas um, companies, I wouldn't know what their concerns were in respect to um, equity um, as stated in the LI. Um, what, I can, uh, I, what I can say is that I am very, very sure the lawmakers have taken everything into consideration and I am told that it was, uh, they were very consultative in, 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 in when they were creating this particular LI. So I, I don't have an answer to that. But um, in terms of um, standards, um, yes, the oil and gas uh, industry is full of standards. It's a very specialized uh, industry, requires a lot of uh, standards to be adhered to um, because it's a very capital intensive industry. So that is part of the reason why the government, even before the law came into being set up uh, a center that would help Ghanaians who have aspiration to, to participate in this industry to up their game in terms of developing their skills, finding information, filling in all the gaps, financial gaps, uh, information technology gaps, business management skills, basic things like how to even bid for 
um, um, bid successfully for a contract and execute it professionally. These are some of the issues that um, we are addressing at the Enterprise Development Center to address the issues of standards. Yes, um, there are standards and specifications and we point, uh, we are there to help to point the indigenous SMEs to the right direction, to the right entity so that they can acquire these standards. So how do you build the capacity of SMEs to, to fit into this? Do you organize um, panel discussions? Do you do um, some joint cooperation? It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of um, various tools. We do the traditional training, um, that is the classroom type training in business skills development, which um, takes uh, the form of um, presentations and all that. So we do that. We also do a lot of mentoring, business mentoring. We do coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the mentoring is also one-on-one. -on -one. We have seminars and then we bring the industry players also um, to come and share their um, procurement processes and standards with them. Um, the registered SMEs who want to participate and therefore have registered um, on our platform. And uh, we do all these things so that we create harmony and we create um, um, a win-win situation. Expectations are managed and um, we, we are so that there's a lot of transparency and enhanced opportunity for local content participation. Do you do monitoring and evaluation? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we do a lot of monitoring and evaluation. Uh, we visit each SME that have gone through our intervention to ensure that, one, um, the, um, the, the knowledge acquired is being utilized um, in their various establishments and also to continue to give them one-on-one um, -on -one coaching and one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which is very, very important. We also do um, um, get feedback um, from the international oil companies. Mm. We get a lot of information from them and feedback regarding how the SMEs are faring, whether they are bidding properly, whether there are still some gaps that need to be addressed and we, we work with the individual. So our intervention is actually customized to suit each SME because each business is different from the other. So we customize our intervention. Do you encounter any challenges that you think are very, very inimical? Um, well, in life, everything comes with challenges, but challenges are, um, are there to be, to be addressed. So we, we had, some, or we do have challenges, but they are not uh, out of the roof. We are managing the challenges. We work very closely with the oil companies. We work very closely with the Petroleum Commission, um, being the regulator in this. And our parents' uh, ministry, the Ministry of Energy, is very, very supportive. We work very closely with them and the Ministry of Trade as well. So, uh, and we work with the GNPC and uh, basically we work, we work with all stakeholders. So collectively, when there are challenges, we bring them up and we resolve the challenges. Okay. Now let's move on to the second um, area. Um, how do you find the future of Ghana's hydrocarbon sector? <laughs> that, uh, the the hydrocarbon sector, well, again, um, I think the right steps are being uh, put in place. Um, again, there's a lot of work um, to be done, um, but I see that um, we can achieve whatever target we want to achieve. So if we're given the opportunity, I mean, now the other discoveries are coming up, do you have any area regarding our local content that you think should be modified or should be Looked, I mean, taking a second look at for it to suit um, our, our situation here in Ghana? Well, I think the necessary steps have been taken. I think Ghana has done very well. Um, we've taken a lot of lessons from countries that have done it and they've done it well. And um, so we're benchmarking them. The ministry did a lot of work, Ministry of Energy and the Petroleum Commission, GNPC, they did a lot of work on that. So I think we are on the right track. And so with more discoveries, we will just up our game and improve as we go along and get a lot more Ghanaians to participate and create an environment where the international investors would be pleased doing business with indigenous uh, companies and vice versa. Um, we also encourage a lot of joint venture um, um, in relationships so that there will be a lot of um, synergy, there will be a lot of knowledge share and also um, resource 
uh, can be resources can be put together, um, especially because of the capital intensive nature of the oil and gas sector. Now, so tell me, who should attend the Made in Ghana Summit? Uh, Made in Ghana Summit, I think any Ghanaian who is looking to, to improve the participation of Ghanaians in business and contribution to the economy of Ghana should attend. Um, I'm sure it's, it's going to be a very good platform for local or indigenous, small, medium um, and large Ghanaian companies as well as international companies to interact and do business together. So I think it's for everybody, it's for the oil and gas sector, it's for the mining sector, it's for the agricultural sector, it's for every sector. That's the way I see it. Thank you very much, Madam, for your time. Pleasure. I've been speaking to Madam Shika Fonachi, the country director for the Enterprise Development Center in Santa Barbara.